Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast, bringing personal finance to you step by step. This is episode five. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to dive straight into this episode though, as I opened the door last week and then asked you not to step through it. I wasn't being deliberately unkind, I just want you to focus your energies in one area at a time. That's a key lesson in money, and one you'll no doubt see reoccur through these episodes. Focus on one area at a time, or else your focus doesn't achieve much. Last time I asked you to focus on implementing your spending plan. Having a game plan on how you would spend next month's money ahead of time on paper, on purpose, so it goes further and works harder for you. I raised the idea of having three accounts to keep life simple. One for getting paid and paying regular bills, one for spending from, and a third for saving into. By keeping things straightforward, we can automate bill paying through one current account, setting up automatic savings to a cash nicer, and spend freely from a second current account, safe in the knowledge that the money is there to spend and zero means zero. So that's where I opened the door and kept you at bay. I asked you to not make decisions on changing your account structure until I give you more options. What are those options then? First up, all banks and building societies offer current accounts. They are one of the most widely offered products and are currently undergoing something of a a renaissance amongst consumers. The lowly basic current account has been spruced up a bit of late and the banks are now realising that if they can get you into their current account they can likely sell you some of their other wares afterwards. So this has led to lots of perks, bonus interest rates, even cashback being offered. Now why am I telling you all this? The answer is simple. How can we best play the game and use it to our advantage? If we can take our account structure of having two current accounts one for bills, one for spending, we can then see what the market is offering and what we might expect to gain from our choices. The range of current accounts out there at the moment, that is November 2014 at time of this recording, that range contains one product that is unlike all the others. It's a current account that pays a percentage of your bills back to you as cashback. It's offered by Santander and it's their 123 current account. The 123 speaks to the amount of cashback they give you for having direct debit set up on the account. Let me give you that in normal talk. If you pay your council tax from the account, they'll give you 1% cashback. So £1 for a £100 monthly direct debit. They'll give you 2% of your monthly payment for gas and electricity. So an £80 utilities direct debit gets you £1.60 back each month. They'll give you 3% on mobile and landline phone bills, broadband TV packages. So £90 of combined satellite broadband and mobile bills will give you £3 a month back. Now the caveats from their side are that you must pay in £500 a month, which is easily done for most people if you get paid into the account. And you must set up at least two direct debits, which of course you're going to in order to take advantage of the cashback. They also charge £2 each month as a service fee. Now in my little example here, we are actually getting £5.60 of cash back each month. So we'd clear £3.60 profit, or £43.20 each year, clear profit for using the account in this way. Now that's a lot of money for nothing compared to the £0 every other current account pays you for doing the same job. So my tip for your current account for bills only the one you get paid into and it automatically pays bills from. My tip for that is the Santander 123 current account. You can check on the website if your direct debits are going to provide you a profit, but for many people I believe you can make money from this account. It's become very popular since launching in 2012 and it's this cashback feature that gets the praise. Also, remember two things. One, This account will have limited interaction from you. So you don't need bells and whistles like checkbooks, branches very close to your home, huge overdrafts, multiple debit cards, all all these things. 
a small overdraft may be useful for any unexpected bill changes, but it's not essential. The account will just be used simply and cleanly to make you a little bit of money whilst keeping your bills paid. Second thing, as of September 2013, switching current account can now take as little as seven days. The banks have signed up to an initiative that means your present bank account is closed down. The direct debit, standing orders and salary payments are redirected to the newly opened account. If anyone tries to take money from or pay money into the old account, it is redirected automatically to the new one. This lasts for 12 months, by which time everyone should have been informed and forgotten about the old account. If any direct debits are unable to be taken, the bank will refund any charges that you may have incurred, so the whole process should happen at no cost to you. Right, so they're the details of the seven day switching. Why am I mentioning it to you then? Well, it may be a mixed blessing for you. It's great if you don't mind losing your old account, but for many of you, I suspect you'd wanna keep the old account to act as the second current account in our plan, the miscellaneous spending cash account. Therefore, taking advantage of the switching guarantee may not be something we look at. Let's look into the idea of the second current account and see if it clears up this matter then. Our second current account will be where we spend cash from on discretionary stuff, safe in the knowledge that the bills are paid and perhaps even money is automatically going towards debt repayment or savings. We need something different from this account. We need access to our cash quickly and without any sort of fuss. In practical terms, a debit card's a must, access to lots of free cash machines, preferably that new contactless paying method, and an app on your phone so that you can check the balance easily. In banking terms, we don't want an overdraft on this account. Zero must mean zero, and running up an overdraft means we're only stealing from next month's us, from next month's money. We also won't necessarily be funding this account with many hundreds of pounds each month. It's only going to be our spending cash. So a current account with a large minimum pay in amount wouldn't be ideal. Now, this list isn't actually prohibitive. In fact, it's basically the list of what all standard current accounts offer. You're free to then take your pick from whoever you like to bank with, whoever has branches close to you for easy cash withdrawals, whoever has the best iPhone app, We can even opt out of any overdrafts that may be offered. My only advice here would be to check the minimum pay in amount, but also to check that they are part of the faster payments service. This means money being transferred will appear at its destination account within often just minutes. If you were waiting for money to spend on payday, then transferring from your bills current account into your spending current account needs to be really fast. Faster payments replaces the old BAX system, which has been around for many, many years, and payments appear almost instantly. It makes sense to pick from the list of members of the Faster Payment Service. Currently, there are 10 of the largest bank and building society groups signed up, including Barclays, Clydesdale Bank, Co-op, HSBC, Lloyds, Nationwide, RBS and Santander and any other institutions within those umbrella groups benefit too. So there is lots of high street presence there. Having two accounts that are both part of the faster payment service means transferring money between accounts no longer takes the three or four days that the old back system used to take. Instead, it's hours or likely just minutes. Unfortunately, there isn't a current account that gives you cash back on your discretionary spending. Some banks have experimented with this in the past, but at the moment, there's nothing on offer. The closest you will get is a cashback credit card, but I'm loath to advocate using credit cards at a time when we are trying to create boundaries and structure for our financial picture. So let's park that idea for a later episode and just enjoy the peace of mind of having natural structure to our spending and having the right accounts for the right jobs. So that brings us on to our third account of the concept. This is the savings account, our cash nicer. Now, for those of you who know the term, but not the definition, nicer stands for new individual savings account. New because the rules are changed quite frequently, usually to simplify them, as they were rarely complicated when they started back in 1999. As of this year, 
you are allowed to put in up to £15,000 and hold it as cash or more complicated investments like shares, investment funds, bonds and so on, all free of growth and income tax. Now, in real world speak, a cash nicer is just a savings account you don't pay tax on. So by not paying tax on any interest you earn from your savings, you actually get the rate they advertise. Unlike a savings account where the rate they advertise is then worthy of 20% or 40% or even 45% income tax, depending on your level of annual earnings. Cash nices keep things simple. And we like that here at Simple Steps Personal Finance. The clue's in the name. Finding out which cash nicer suits you is fairly easy. You want one with instant access if you want to access your savings quickly. You want one with an institution that has online access with fast transfers or a branch near you. You want the best interest rate available from whoever meets those previous two criteria. The world of cash nicers changes almost monthly though. So you'll want to go online and check one of the sites that track these products closely. For instance, Savings Champion or Money Saving Expert are two websites that monitor this space very closely. Pick the best deal now and then use a rate tracker service like one offered by Savings Champion to keep an eye on the rate your nicer is getting and whether a better one has since appeared. If a better one does, you've got two options. You could transfer your money over to the new nicer and get the better rate or you could make a call on whether it's a big enough difference to be worth the hassle. Either way, you make a controlled decision. Now, another purpose for a cash nicer is my simple step two. Keep £1,000 as a rainy day fund. This starter emergency fund is ideal for being kept in a cash nicer. You'll guarantee yourself a little bit of interest, sure, but it's the benefit of having it off to the side in an easily accessible but isolated account that appeals to me most. You don't have to worry about it accidentally get mixed up with your bills money or disaster of disasters, your spending money. Once you graduate up to simple step four, keeping four to six months of living expenses as rainy day money, then the nicer becomes even more important. It really is an account you can keep on the back burner and rely on when emergency strikes. So that's our three account system, clean spending, automated bill paying, and isolated savings. And with the benefit of making sure we earn as much interest as possible and even earn a little just by paying our bills. Now you can't argue with that logic. With just a little bit of forethought before opening these accounts, it's really the only effort we need to put into this. The approach keep things simple and it creates a, a backbone for you to build your financial picture on. Now I'm preempting any emails or tweets I'm gonna receive about this episode. Mainly, I expect to hear how does this work if you're married? Do you each have this three account set up? Now, my experience in using this method depends on whether we're talking living together, married, single or engaged. If you're living together, it's best to keep things separate financially so that you don't create too many strings if you want to call it a day. If you're single, then the three account system is designed specifically for you. If you're engaged and soon to be married, then wait till you actually tie the knot and then put my married version account structure into play. So let's get down to that. If you are married, here's what I suggest instead. The principle is largely the same. Have a main current account for getting paid into and paying bills from. This is best to be a, a joint account so that you both have equal rights and access to it. For the second current account, the spending account, I suggest you have one each rather than share one. That way you both get to have individual debit cards you each get to transfer a set amount of spending cash in each month and spend it freely as individuals. The main benefit here is behavioural. How many couples have argued about what the other has spent on clothing or gadgets? If the amount you are free to spend each month comes from a plan you both agreed and was an amount you both agreed, no longer are you going to care what the other spends their discretionary cash on. No having to explain how many lattes you drank, apps you downloaded or shoes you bought. You could even shop for presents for each other without having to secret the cash away. By having your own current accounts for spending cash, it's your money and yours alone. A lesser advantage is that the balance on your own account is always telling you the truth. It could be misleading if both of you were to spend simultaneously from one spending account. But really that's incidental. 
I think the seemingly obligatory money fights within a marriage can be avoided by simply having a current account each for spending. That and having a monthly spending plan is enough to show foot even the rockiest of financial lives. And rocky financial lives tend to rock marriages. So if you're married, the three account rule becomes the four account rule, I suppose. Same concept, same flexibility, same control of your money. And the two of you working from the same page. Next time, we'll look at how paying yourself is better than paying others, how saving money in advance of buying things is cheaper overall and puts you in control of your future without taking away your ability to have it now. In the meantime, though, check out my blog at sspf.co.uk slash blog for a guide to current accounts and cash nices for more details of the products that we've been discussing here. My guides will give you the background on each product and how to find out what is the best deal on the market for your circumstances. And I have a request of you. Don't forget to spread the word. Financial peace of mind is here to stay. Simple Steps and my personal finance coaching are here to help. If you're finding this approach useful but are still unsure how to act, drop me a line, see how personal finance coaching can help you. After all, what could be better than having personal guidance tailored to your specific circumstances? Thanks for listening. That's it for episode 5. For more information, check out sspf.co.uk for show notes and transcripts of each episode. This podcast is copyright of Simple Steps Personal Finance Limited and can be shared freely. The SSPF podcast is available as direct download on Android, RSS, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Vimeo and Dailymotion. We're here however you want us. If you like what you're hearing, please leave a review so others know to listen in. Thanks as always to Partners in Rhyme for the music used throughout this podcast. See you next time.